I'm going to talk about my wonderful Erard harp. Um, I have a brace of harps here. These are wonderful double action harps which Erard developed. Harps, as you know, have come in all shapes and sizes from ancient Egyptian, a small triangle with a couple of strings, um, right up to this, which is a, quite a complicated machine. Developed by Sebastian Erard. Um, he was born in 1752 and was very interested in geometry and architecture. I think he was a very bright cookie. Um, and started working for a harpsichord maker in Paris. He was deemed too bright and they sacked him. <laughs> uh, rather nervous about him. And he started up by himself in Paris and started developing this double action harp, which I'll explain in a minute. By 1808, he'd developed this harp, um, but of course, things were tricky in Paris in the 1790s. Um, Marie Antoinette was a famous harpist and he worked for her. Uh, he felt perhaps it was not quite a good idea to stick around in Paris. So he moved to London, uh, set up a workshop there. And this harp has um, Great Marlborough Street written up here. Number 18, Great Marlborough Street, which is where he set up his workshop. Um, eventually went back to Paris and had one in each city. But the point of these harps is double action, means three levels of pedals. There are seven pedals, one for every note of the scale, and each pedal has three levels, flat, natural and sharp. This devised a method of playing in any key. Up till now we'd had either just open strings or a single action, which means only up to three sharps, three flats. Now we have this incredibly complicated double action. I'll talk to you about the mechanism here. It has to be very precise for it to be in tune. Um, there are seven pedals, one for every note of the scale, and the pegs tighten the string accordingly. So natural um, open string is flat, um, the pedal is up, it tightens once to make it natural, and down again, sharp. And this is the method that um, was used now to create the famous harp de Sando. Uh, whether you like them or not, it is um, a huge revolution in the, in the instrument to be able to do that. And you can do that by cutting out um, the, the difficult sounds. So for that, I put on, it's a, a, a glissando of C7. I put on F flat, B flat and A sharp, so it's only um, fairy music. This harp was now famous for its ability and um, other rival harps, harp makers, Playl, for one, uh, made a chromatic harp, a different version of, of this harp, and commissioned Debussy to write his dances uh, for harp and string orchestra to um, exhibit the harp's abilities. Erard was slightly miffed by this, so commissioned Ravel to write his septet for harp to show off, um, to show off the ability of the harp. So two different pieces, um, really incredible, sudden burst onto the performance platform of this music. So this harp was built in, you can tell from the, the number up here, this was built in 1907 and my other Erard here was built in 1905 
which is terribly exciting because Ravel was commissioned in 1905 to write his um, introduction to Allegro. My other Erard was very, very generously given to me by my harp teacher. She learnt with Gwendolyn Mason and Gwendolyn Mason played the Ravel in London and Oxford with Ravel conducting uh, when it was performed that year. Terribly exciting. Debussy is controversial in the harp world because he's famous for saying that harpists spend their, half their life tuning the harp and the rest playing out of tune. Uh, not kind or fair, uh, but uh, hopefully not the case. Mm -hmm.